Welcome everyone to this absolutely gorgeous day, a new beginning <clears throat> here at our Monday morning Global Heart Residence call. And uh, I feel so much deep reverence as we come here and choose to really come into this glorious field of love. When we come here to, uh, the word that's coming to me this morning is rejoice. I'm going to invite everyone to put themselves on mute because I actually didn't set it up on the default. Nancy, I'm going to put you on. Thank you. Ah, so <clears throat> as planetary stewards, as mentoring stewards, we come here into the space to I just keep feeling rejoice, to rejoice in this field that is always informing us, is constantly remembering us. If we really just simply state that intention to be in this, in this field of resonance. And what we call miracles are just everyday happenings where we feel that in the world we've been using a lot since the retreat is syntony when we feel that sort of harmonic oscillation oscillation happening with each and every one of us within our cells and i'm just feeling that sensation of of life's glory even amidst the chaos so inviting you in today without a lot of guidelines <laughs> to really take a breath and feel this scintillation of our cells as they cluster, as, as that, Oriana always says, that mitochondria just starts that pulsation. And this morning, just tuning in as we align and redesign for wholeness and so beautifully being here with June who brought this topic forward that we're really um, moving into an anchoring of this love and that's really what I felt from the retreat and after leaving was this sense of anchoring that um, those of us that were there and those of us that participated and, and all of you are um, being instilled to feel how supported, how loved we really are. And so this call is an opportunity to cultivate this ethos of wholeness within our bodies, our physical bodies, and tapping into that sense of sensation. It is a sensation, and I never knew this, beauty, is a sensation it is a state of being and i swear i never knew this um <clears throat> and it's been really recent that i from that from that experience of coming together and watching even as um even as the grief showed up within the field what became really evident is the field itself can, as Andrew Har Harvey has said, mutate into its highest order. And for all of us that have thought, oh, I need to do something. We need to do something. We need to, you know, um, yes, we need to hold the space for it to happen. There's no question. But I, I, the revealing of the nature of the field itself, this, this, what we're calling resonance, will absolutely transmute any energies and that was the experience of that retreat and that is the experience that's being made available to us in a way that i had never had any idea you know all all of our past meanderings through i'm sorry i'm going on but i'm just going to invite you into this frequency of love this what we call here this home frequency I'll invite that breath with absolute humility and sincerity 
It's simply like a show me, open me, use me. And we'll open this call. I know I've been talking a lot, but just into that state of stillness where the field reorganizes itself within you and as you and touches people so deeply that they can feel that state of wholeness as well. I'm taking a moment to just feel that sensate shimmering it's sometimes it's ever so subtle but it's there but, and what I'm sensing is what it, the invitation for all of us is to notice how the light shimmers on water because it's exactly what's happening as we tune into this resonant field of love. It's the light that we are communicating with the waters that run so deep within our physicality, our emotionality, and is the source of that spirituality that's always arising. And this is the redesigning, this is the remodeling and the aligning for the state of wholeness to become more visible. And this morning, I'm just going to simply say that, and I'm going to pass the, <laughs> the virtual plug, plug in, to June, because <clears throat> this is the voice of your heart. This is the opportunity. This, this time together is, is where your heart gets to speak. And when we tune into it, the essence, it moves the entire circle into coherence. And that's what we're all about here on these Monday morning calls. So with that, I pass, put, put the talking stick in the circle and June, open our call. And thank you so much for saying yes and showing up. Complete. Whole. Good morning, everyone. This is June. And they were <clears throat> looking at realign and redesign for wholeness. Um, one of our own people, uh, John Brockett, uh, gave us a quote the other day. We are redesigning our fixed interpretations of love. And then Wayne Dwyer said, when you are thinking about the principle of alignment, keep in mind that source energy is ever present and that you always have the power to bring yourself into harmony with who you really are. And who you are is a higher awareness than your earthbound form. Remembering you are divine energy in physical form will help readjust your energy. Once you recognize your divinity, you'll slip out of misaligned thought patterns and shift in the vibration of source. And then we have Julie Cruel's two-line poem that she introduced to us uh, at, the, at the retreat. A call to realign the self and soul is a call to redesign by heart and whole. And so today, let's consider what's needed to realign with the self and soul in order to serve the whole. What emerges as you consider this? And I'm complete.
Good morning, beloved. This is Cassandra picking up the talking stick. I have been uh, shifting into this very topic. Over the last 30, 45 days, I've realized that I no longer want to live in Texas. It's um, the environment here is not stimulating me. That was when I began to realign to what my needs, what my essential self wanted me to experience more fully. And redesigning is my willingness to con contemplate selling my home and moving to a new place. South Carolina seems to be coming up for some reason. I don't know why, um, but I'm exploring that. My sister is willing to uh, come and buy a home. We're looking for a five or six bedroom home. Um, I woke up this morning and realized I have to have a topiary in my home. I have to have the light shining in so that plants can thrive in my home. I have a list of about 20 things that spirit wants me to embrace more fully love those lists <laughs> just love them <laughs> so that's how i would like to come into this magnificent circle of divine co-creators flowing and redesigning themselves as well so although like kate i am eternally incomplete, I am complete for the moment. And I return the talking stick. Hmm. I pick up the thread in the field. Good morning, all. Hmm. Bringing uh, this realignment in the last 35, 40 days. On August 27, something happened. And, uh, and I gave the big yes. I mean, 100% yes to my soul purpose, to what my heart is here to experience. And since then, I have been danced. I've been danced with realizing in what is happening in the redesigning of my life, I have been fully received. What I said yes to has been is like is like the contract is active, and I am participating in that. So from that place, I don't know why this is coming, but it seems that the field uh, is asking me to speak it to bring it to form. Uh, when you said. When, it, when you said uh, a big house with five, six rooms, I mean, it's like, <clears throat> speak it, girl. I am looking, Boulder obviously has called me uh, for a different purpose. And it's not for, it seems under appearance, is my grandson, but that's a very small part of it. And I'm delighted to be here. But uh, looking for a place, that a bigger place, that it has uh, many rooms, that people can come and stay. I am, I am seeing more clearly that uh, what needs to happen, it is much less in words and more being in that space, 
to pop and the need for the parents for I call it dream midwife and nannies to be present to birth the creative spirit within the heart and hold the space to rise it and even nanny it until the stand on his own feet. That is that has been the call. I've been I've been providing that. I've had the experience of being provided that for me. And obviously this is my calling because I called it in and now it comes to a form. It's like thinking, okay, I will go just a little further in Boulder and around the mountain and it would be a place that, that which has been always dear to me. It's like to, to really create a physical nurturing space for people and see them to come out. That the heart is free to express itself in any form. Then I said it. I said it. It's been just coming in in pieces. But uh, after the retreat, that was the gift of the retreat, that I realized that what we call mentoring stewards, I have not experienced that I provide that we provide that for each other. I mean, only Mondays, but I want that to be life experience. It would be any time that I am in that need and I desire that, so, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I am complete. Ah. <laughs> This is Dina in Oregon. We are the field actualizing itself. And uh, the key, I believe, is conscious. We, we're conscious of this. And in that, um, we are creators. And uh, so that's, that's the field feeling I'm having right now. And knowing that we are a living organism uh, and, a, and a conscious co-creating whole. And there's the power to manifest. And we are manifesting consciously. So there is great joy, great uh, celebration of knowing and being this together. I'm complete.
Good morning, this is June. <clears throat> and I've been repeating the words that John Brockett uh, brought into the group of, we are redesigning our fixed interpretations of love and really deepening into what that means for me at a, at a whole different level. Um, and it makes me really look at what I think love is or what I think I'm doing that is loving and really gives me a, a whole new chance to look at I can go to the self and the soul and, and ask myself you know, who is this soul who is this this self um, that walks around with the name June and does her usual things but <clears throat> deeper, much deeper than that is the question of who am I, why am I here? And when I put that to John's words, I get to see that I, I choose to give love or receive love in some fixed ways uh, that I've learned since I was a little child. And I've learned to increase and, and expand and grow more ways to give, but I also am aware that there's so much more that I could interpret as love. Uh, I, things that I can say, see, do, and be in the world um, that are ways of giving and ways of receiving love that would really touch into the real soul and being of who I am. And so as I'm sitting with these words and looking at all of your faces, which I'm still steeped in from our, um, our retreat, and, and I think of all the ways in which we gave love at the retreat and received that love and, and settled into the roots of who we are. Um, I'm really going to be sitting with these words, uh, not only John's, but Julie's. Uh, a call to realign the self and soul is a call to redesign by heart and whole. That is in two lines that says so much about what I now can really start to look at and do with my own life. Uh, because loving is one of the things that no matter what you have or don't have or what you're doing or don't do, love is is there and it's possible always to express it and to feel it and to give it and receive it. So um, this is a powerful subject today and I, I really appreciate being here with all of you and I'm complete. Good morning all, this is Kate in South Dakota. I feel like if John was with us, he would certainly pick up the feather on the, on the heels of that, knowing, you know, how much that his, you know, the expression of how we look at love, what is love, and, you know, our big all-encompassing word that covers so much. Um, so I guess, I think I just picked it up as like a nudge of, John would pick up if he was here. Um, a beautiful, I mean, wonderful things to contemplate, and I've been contemplating it almost constantly since I've been back. You know, when uh, Andrew Harvey was talking about that it takes a mutation, I thought that mutation is just this new template that we infuse onto this ever-growing wholeness capacity that everyone is is you know i always say it's a me and i a story that everybody's doing the best they can with what they know at any given time but now as we consciously move forward and know and understand so much more and and and, and it is a feeling place now for me so I don't really know what it means to realign more, but I keep asking and keep trying to live that out more. 
as as you know as a matter of fact there was an opportunity um uh, well you know I, I would divulge into stories and i feel my internal bell maybe maybe uh bringing in that i don't i don't know that answer but i keep questioning and i keep getting hits about the the movie the green beautiful i don't know if any of you have seen the green beautiful but it's this group of souls and they're like they have to they're from all these plants and they come together and they're like no no i don't want to go back to earth sign you know the soul's been doing okay uh but we need you here on earth and then they get to this place where it's simply the touching of the waters that expounds the field that they're trying to so you know i just keep coming back to i want to thank all of you for what i learn and and how i can imbue even better soul modeling thoughts upon the waters and the energy that flows through me and truly that's the only power i really have and uh I, I just love you all, and I'll return the talking to you. Plug in. <laughs> Plug it in to somebody else now. Thank you all for listening. Kate, thank you. I'm just giggling with love bubbles. I don't know much to say other than I'm just giggling with love bubbles. So I'm just sending all this love bubbles out to you all. I'm complete. <laughs> This is Dinama. <clears throat> we are redesigning our expression of the field consciously. And uh, that's the actualizing force. You know, back to that. But that's that's where we are. We're redesigning. We are. <laughs> designing ourselves as the universal human or i've heard unividuals it's that that connection to the universe that we are and creating our expression from that and detaching from our story the expression that we hold emotionally of our story uh, so to me that's a, a a mutation step or a a morphing um, and we're in that morphing field and it's so exciting it's so viscerally experienced at least uh, more so for me as our retreat connected to so many in the noosphere and 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 the influence of our awakening um, transmitting into the whole of the field. Anyway, I'm complete. Good morning, beautiful faces. This is Linda in Indiana, for those of you on the phone. And it's rare for me to have a Monday morning that I can be on this call. So delighted to be here. And um, 
have been realigning and redesigning since we left the retreat. Um, because in, in my in my tradition, which I don't practice all the time, but it in the Jewish tradition, this is um, Rosh Hashanah, the 10 days of awe between the new year and the day of atonement, which will be Wednesday this week. And in these 10 days of awe, the time for self-reflection. And not only in this country and, and in the world and how I can be more love. It's one thing to giving love and receiving love but being love is what's running through my my veins and this visceral feeling this bubbling of love this connecting to one another and connecting to the to the large Um, it is joy to go back or enjoy it. Um, love is, is a gift that just keeps pouring endlessly into us. And it's such a joy to, to consciously open every cell so that we're receiving this love. And life is truly amazingly miraculous when can drink in all the love that's available for us. So I'm breathing and sharing that and so happy to be here with everyone. Um, redesigning and realigning and stepping into this new um, extra, extra ordinary, extraordinary time um, to be alive. I'm complete. Love you all. This is Cassandra, and I'd like to pick up Linda's thread of joyousness, which Shelley brought to us this morning, and say that joy and acceptance to realign and to explore even deeper, to continue to walk my talk. I made that commitment decades ago, but to cultivate relationships that continually nourish that. So that is where I am at uh, with this joyous moment in time. And I see that that's what we're doing. Every time we show up on this call, we are aligning, realigning, redefining. Uh, this is our natural process as a human that we bring attention to it is wonderful because now we add the consciously uh, choosing to follow that particular uh, thread or, or some ups, as was the case for me. The question is, would I have gotten to where I got as quickly were I not on this call? Were I not involved with other men and women who are doing the very same thing in their lives? And I think that truthfully, the answer would have to be no. I, I mean, I would have gotten there eventually, but I'm already 70 years old. <laughs> Why would I want to wait even one more day? So with that, I feel complete. And I bring that back to the field in joy and gratitude for each and every one of you, because you do change my lives every day. Thank you.
morning. This is Julie in Nebraska. And I want to follow that um, thread because of how we often talk about creating the conditions for this healing to occur, creating the conditions for our wholeness. We're creating the conditions to realign and redesign our lives. And, um, and what are those conditions? We know the conditions for healing. We know the conditions for our physical body to heal. We understand that. Science has shown us that. What are the conditions that support us in realigning and redesigning? Yesterday, last night, I had a, a very long night and I was having this marathon dream at the same time of not really being in deep sleep because the smoke alarm right outside of our bedroom door was beeping. And at first it's really startling because it's hardwired in with the electricity. So you don't think that the battery's low, it's beeping, but come to learn that they do have backup batteries and they do let you know when the backup battery's getting low as well. And this startling, it's like, it wasn't this every 30 seconds or every 60 seconds, it would be this crazy pattern in my dog, Boo, whom many of you know, was in such distress all along. Just shivering, um, pawing at me, like, do something, do something. I'm going crazy. I can't do this. And then I'm feeling that. And then I'm not sleeping. And then I'm awake, comforting the dog and talking to the dog and wanting to go take a sledgehammer, but it's like a really, really tall ceiling and I can't even get up there without a huge ladder or sleep in the basement or something. And then I'm keeping my husband awake. So it, that to me, that story is such an important reflection for me today on how do we create the conditions to realign and redesign? What is that frequency, that home frequency of love? What is this frequency of beauty and peace and healing that we desire that helps facilitate our highest expression? And this morning in, in my reflection, I'm feeling as if much of social media is like that darn smoke alarm where it's just not creating the conditions for my own realign and redesign that feels good with my soul today. So I just bring that in there. Beautiful, beautiful. This call is a part of creating the conditions. I just really want to bring that back in, coming here, being in this presence, holding this field, seeing your magnificent, magnificent glowing faces, feeling you is a part of creating those conditions for that highest expression. And so with me, I, I close with deep, deep gratitude for all of you and um, in my incomplete wholeness. I'm complete. This is Shelley, and I'm going to just slide in on that thread. <clears throat> I'm so touched. So touched, and I feel like it's something is becoming very clear. <clears throat> that we've been realigning and redesigning for wholeness from the day this call began, seven, maybe even we're getting close to eight years ago. And the shift for me in looking at all of you and feeling into this, and I'm going to drop in a word that we hardly, hardly, hardly ever say, is ecstasy. The field, when it's, as was being said, you know, when those conditions are created for someone to experience their wholeness, 
And I think what, what I'm hearing in the background is, you know, during the trip, talked a lot about creating the, you know, we've always talked about this, creating the container for the field to express itself. And when the field expresses itself through us and as us, it, it is ecstatic. You know, I'm just now I'm thinking about, for those of you that weren't there, um, Heinz uh, was sort of the conduit for all this sort of grief and, and feeling trapped. Because as a field arises, as that love arises, what else has to come up with it is all those feelings of whatever, trapped, unloved, um, not enough, you know, all those old beliefs, right? And the, the container was built with so much love and capacity and competency that as the grief arose, arose within the circle, which completely surprised me, the field itself mutated the energy. We didn't have to do anything other than stay in that pure frequency of love. And I think that's the realigning and redesigning is, is really coming into that sensate um, experience, you know, experience, embody, express of our living ecstatic nervous system, that the nervous system, the, the um, circulatory system, all the systems are actually given what they, and I love this, we talk so much about what they precisely need, what each of one of us, what each one of those cells precisely needs, it can, it can be, as, as Grace says, that the, the, the bubbles of joy, you know, the, <laughs> you know, the bubbles, and that's ecstatic. That's being, allowing ourselves to be, be moved into that natural relationship with the whole. We feel it when we go out into nature and we go out to these trails and we're under those mountains and, you know, whatever, Boulder, I got to spend a few extra days in Boulder. And, you know, um, when we feel that spaciousness, when we feel we can settle in. So I just, I'm feeling so grateful to, <clears throat> you know, to the field itself for that informing our physicality, informing our emotionality that we're loved and we're held and we're supported and we can, as everyone's been saying, we can let go. We can let go. And that safety doesn't come from another person. That safety comes from the resonance of the field itself because that's its natural vibe, you know, that's its natural um, tone or, or, yeah. So I'm, I'm feeling um, this wondrous state of, of realization of, how through, as was being said, how <clears throat> when we listen and we respond, so our response ability is becoming refined as well in terms of moving into that, that arc of wholeness. I'm thinking a lot of movies <laughs> and scenes lately, but you know, that, that arc of wholeness, you know, when we think of the rainbow bridge or the rainbow serpent or the Oribus, right? It's all saying the same thing. Remember your wholeness, remember who you are. So I love you so much. And this has been just and continues to be more and more ecstatic and magical and um, and I'm whole home and for the moment complete this is uh, Sharon in New Jersey I'll I'll pick up and pull some threads here. Um, I loved, I love what you just said, Shelly, about staying in the frequency of pure love. That is, that's a redesign and the realign if you can be there. And I love hearing from you because know, speaking you, speaking. 
being tenant you're having that are moving from you of realignment of physically realigning in different ways and Julie, I think that was a great story of, of trying to, uh, you're being present with disturbance in the field, this is the, in the force there. I've lived through those beepings at night, and I have found that it's worth going down and getting the ladder, no matter what time it is, and dealing with it, or you will never sleep. So um, there's probably a message there, too. <laughs> but... Um, What's coming up for me, it's interesting, is uh, um, I'm looking at the possibility of uh, some work projects that I kind of put out to the universe and they're coming back and there's possibilities of, of work that would either be three or four months or small times or, you know, in the corporate sector. And um, I, I'm, it's like my inner being, is, it's just a sense of kind of amusement that, oh, yeah, that's what you're going to do. <laughs> Go do it. Bring that love out into this. You know, uh, it, it doesn't feel discontinuous. It doesn't feel like a problem. It feels like, yeah, you're going to get a boatload of money and you need that right now. And you're going to bring you into these situations where you're gonna to touch all these people. And who knows what good is gonna come of that, but it's certainly gonna happen. So I'm very intrigued. I, I very much feel like, I think it was Nahid that said, you're being danced. You know, I, do, I feel that way about this. It's not that I'm, my ego is choosing, it, it's just like I'm being danced in this direction and I'm just laughing all the way. I was like, well, this will be fun. <laughs> You know, thought I left that behind, but maybe not. <laughs> Here it is, and let's 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 have some fun if we're going to do this. So um, that we went birding yesterday, at Cape May for a full day. You know, ten hours of birding it was so good, and at the end we got blessed. I wasn't expecting full warblers. It's kind of beyond the, the warbler time, but on our last stop we were going into the conservative, the little uh, visitor center, and we we drive up and there's cars parked all along the road and there's birds everywhere with their binoculars out and their big lenses and we're like oh something's going on what are you looking at warblers so what there must have been you know there was a whole big fallout of warblers right there and we saw all these beautiful little jewels and i had a new beginning birder friend with me who got to experience all that and it's such joy and ecstasy just being out in the field and having that happen and and uh yeah so it's all good. And I am totally in agreement about the value and power of this call on Monday mornings with all of you. It's such a gift. It is so important that we have this space to rejuvenate and, and um, it's, it's satsang at the highest. It's, it's the most intimate satsang for me. Satsang is, I don't know if it's a Sanskrit term, but it's an Indian term for, for coming together in spiritual communion to share the highest vibrations with each other. And that's what we're doing um, in, in a very real grounded way. And I just really appreciate that. So I'm complete. I just was in that state of rejoicing, just watching this amazing, powerful, gorgeous woman. And look who I am being with. It's like I, I am in the experience of satsang, and then you bring it to work. I said, wow. <laughs> So in this ecstatic space, and as containers of the whole banks of the river, let's open the call to those people that 
haven't shared their glory, their wisdom, and their love. And the rest of us will just be in that deepening into that peace. And don't forget, you're probably on mute and unmute yourself. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? This is Nancy. Whoops. Can you hear Nancy in California? Yep, we have you, Nance. That's okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't cut somebody else off. Oh, wow. So I'm uh, just in, in such delight being with everybody. And something came to mind about my um, smoke alarm because about a year ago, my smoke alarm started beeping because it needed a battery change. And my husband took it down off a very high ceiling with the ladder, but somehow we didn't know where it went. And it beeped and beeped and beeped, and it beeped for six months, and we couldn't find it. We had contests with our friends, whoever can find it. We started, you know, doing fun things like, you know, we'll pay $50 for anybody that can find this thing. And it's so interesting how a smoke alarm, you can't tell where it's coming from, but it's, it's there. So... One day, out of the blue, when I wasn't thinking, I found it, and it was right in front of our eyes, just behind something, but right there at my eye level, and it was there all the time, and it kind of just reminds me of what we're talking about today, the, the spirit, you know, our divinity. It's, it's always there, and it's always right next to us, and it's always um, at, at a hand's reach, if we just stop searching, I guess that was, that was my metaphor. And I, I was delighted to hear about the movie, the green beautiful, because this group has always reminded me of that movie because they, in the movie, they do this symphony of silence and it's so beautiful. And it's what we do with our pause in between our sharings. And it feels so connected and so warm. Man. So joyful. Oh, a very beautiful movie, but I'm um, thinking about, you know, recreating my life. You know, it's like the smoke alarm. It's, it's, it's right here. It's already here for me. I, I love where I live, who I live with, what I'm doing, but there's always so much change within it, but I feel home. I feel rooted. I feel um, that I can rest a little bit more right now. That's what the universe is telling me to do is to rest. And I love being Jewish as well, the, the days of awe. It, it's like a rest. The Yom Kippur on Wednesday is the, is the Sabbath of Sabbaths. It's the rest of the, of the whole year. And um, uh, I've heard the Day of uh, Atonement called the Day of at one And I know it's really about uh, loving yourself more. So it's like this call just brings everything together for me. It makes me feel grounded in all the other things I'm doing. And I appreciate you all so much. And I'm grateful to be a part of it. I'm complete. Hi, it's Deborah. Can you hear me? Hey, Deb, we hear you. Oh, great. Ah, ah, so much energy running this morning in this call. So grateful to be here. Redesign, realign. Um, so two big planetary changes have happened in the past recent. Um, and Saturn has moved direct and Pluto has moved direct and it's so redesign, realign is, feels very apropos. Interesting, it is like a big pause as everything changed direction. Um, and so it's moving like one step at a time, a little bit like a turtle. Um, Joy. I, I really feel all of the joy from your retreat. Um, and my current big lesson, I guess, is acceptance. And 
I, as my heart opens, I am becoming more accepting. And somehow for me, it is taking my place in the fabric of life as I do that. And I don't know that I can explain it any better than that, but um, it's just like embracing the all that is and being okay as it has its shadow side and its light side. And there's some way for this land to more fully embody myself as a piece of the puzzle. And uh, thank you very much. Always so grateful to be able to come and be in this field that we are together. It's so enhancing. Thank you. Miss Oriana, uh, I just came to get the giggles. Thank you. <laughs> Great. That was wonderful. Giggle bubbles, bubbles of giggles, something like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm dealing with an ear infection after my flight home. Um, but I also noticed something that occurred this weekend as my husband and I went out dancing as we always do but this this time it was like I was dancing like a mermation of starlings like I really felt this difference of bone and muscle movement and to this floating sensation of just being danced and then I noticed as I focused on my husband, that he was really much more in sync and in rhythm. And we have an agreement that I follow where he leads, but he follows my rhythm. And afterwards, this woman came up to us and said, oh, do, are you teachers? Do you teach dance? I said, no. She says, well, I was watching you and I'm a ballroom dancer. And I kept watching you and Every time I thought I knew what you were doing, that's the cha-cha, that's the jive. But then I'd watch and you weren't actually doing the steps. You were just doing the rhythm of the dance. <laughs> I said, no, we're blues dancers. There's only two steps that we do and the rest we make up as we go along. It just happens that we look like dancing with the stars and can do almost any dance. But she really was amazed that she says, you don't call request. And the feeling, though, of being in the field and having every mitochondria like dancing and then noticing the effect that it now was having on my husband's ability to dance and be danced with me was noticeable. And then I did my class call, I think it was the somebody had posted something about a whale heart this picture of this huge whale heart like three thousand pounds this heart <laughs> weight and i looked at it and i went wow that's got to be full of mitochondria because it's the one thing we have in common with the cestacians 
whoa. And from that, I had this sense of being the heart whale in every mitochondria, like where would that beat of the heart of the whale originate? Mm, and maybe I can feel that within the pulse of all of the field. Like that's the pulse of aliveness that is the mm, field that is the life force of this world. Mm, I'm complete. Good morning, everyone. This is Karen in Costa Rica. We have a beautiful sunny day today. Curtain is closed behind me, but it's just bright anyway, because the sun shines in that window in the morning. And, uh, and Shelly, thank you for the idea of a clip-on light. I'm trying to find one. That is the perfect solution. That'll help me in other ways, too, uh, steam the keys at night. And so thank you. Now I just have to find one. <laughs> There's none in town. <laughs> so and there wasn't any when I got a chance to go to a bigger store um, one day, but I'll keep looking. And if not, I'll be patient. And when my friend goes to the States and back, she does that every three months, she'll bring me one. <laughs> but that won't, I won't have it till December then, but that's okay. Um, this has been a wonderful call. Um, I love being here on Mondays and just connecting with all of you in this resonant field. I have, there are moments I, I just, I have to open them sometimes because I start to go off. <laughs> and for realigning and redesigning, I think that's what my life has been on a daily basis now for two decades <laughs> and it never stops. Uh, in recent days, it's been a lot of things coming together and clearing out. I loved about, I forgot about the astrological events. It makes perfect sense. Things are turning in a corner now ever so slowly and I can see it happening and I can feel it happening. And we're, you know, they, it was words in, in a song about, you know, I think they were talking about the Titanic. You know, it takes, it takes time to turn the ship around. The ship is turning. And, and it may be ever so slowly, but it's, it's getting there. And I think we all see it, we all feel it. And when we come together, it's, it's the field that's created is always powerful. And I loved watching the heed, the joy and the excitement today. Thank you for that, Nahid. <laughs> and when you talked about the container, what came to mind immediately was we are the container. <laughs> so individually and collectively. So it's been, been a wonderful, wonderful time and call. And I look forward to more and where it's all leading. And so thank you for the blessing of being here. And as the others have said, I will never be complete, but I'm, I'm complete for now. <laughs> ah, yes. <clears throat> yes, 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 yes. So, <clears throat> Just to take a moment in that silence before we spiral off into our day and take all of this with us, because we are that. I'm just, <laughs> so I am you, you are me, and we are all together in this field of joy and possibility and wholeness. And this is the message that we're bringing out because it changes everything, everything, when someone actually experiences their wholeness and that state of ecstasy 
joy, calmness, peace can envelop them so that they can take on what is, is theirs to be and to do, mm. how they want to show up. So with that, um, just all come into this beautiful hug, glorious hug, and thank you so much for showing up. You, you are so, <clears throat> so beautiful. And with that, I get to go see my little granddaughter. So I'm gonna pop off and let's everyone unmute themselves and just ripple out this absolutely beautiful yum that goes out to everyone in our families and our communities and the planet and know some very miraculous things are showing up inside of good of the whole with mm -hmm. that if you want to come on the wednesday call we've already had the public call please if you have any issues talk to myself or julie we want you on that call because we are strategizing co-mentoring strategizing for sacred action on the wednesday call mm -hmm. Yum. Yum, 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 yum. yum. yum.